White Pass and Yukon route has faced many challenges. From impossible terrain, brutal weather, and the world wars in the early years, to the closure of 1982, the pandemic, and all of the personal and collective struggles that have come with them. Through these difficult times, we have always risen to the occasion and triumphed. spirit endures. As we face new challenges, we believe that our greatest years are still ahead of us. As heirs to this proud legacy, we take this opportunity to reflect on where we have come from and where the future will take us. with a rich history, dedicated railroaders, and plans to continue this company into a new era. We remain steadfast in sharing our unique landscape, engineering marvels, and the Klondike Gold Rush experience with each and every guest that travels the rail with us. In July of 1897, word flashed around the world of gold discovered along the Yukon River in the Canadian wilderness. As North America remained in economic depression, it was a rousing event when the steamer Portland docked in Seattle. The ship's cargo, fresh from the gold fields, carried 68 miners and almost two tons of gold. As the news spread, People gathered their savings, left their jobs and families, and headed for the promised land. The human wave raced north like cattle on a stampede. The Klondike Gold Rush, the world's last great adventure, was underway. The quickest route from the west coast was up the inside passage to the head of the Lynn Canal in Skagway. Once in Skagway, the challenge was to hike 45 miles over the mountains to Lake Bennett, and from there float another 550 miles down the Yukon River to the gold fields. There were two trails over the looming mountains, the Chilkoot Trail starting north of Skagway, and the White Pass, its trailhead conveniently positioned right at Skagway itself. Even before word of the rich gold strike became public, canny British investor William Close was exploring the idea of building a railroad from Tidewater to the head of the Yukon River. Skagway, with its natural harbor and passageway over the mountains, beckoned. Close sent three professional railroad men to Skagway in April of 1898. The men spent many long days scouting the daunting landscape and came to the conclusion, Can't be done. Impossible. The three made their way back down the mountains to Skagway, where they readied to relay the bad news to Close. Checking into the St. James Hotel, they noticed a rugged looking but charismatic man. He'd just returned from making his own survey for a railroad over the forbidding mountains. Who was this man? That damn fool. That's Big Mike Heaney. He thinks he can build a railroad here. The four talked through the night. And by daybreak, Heaney, an Irish-Canadian railroad contractor, had convinced them that not only could a railroad be built, he was the very man to do it. Give me enough dynamite and snooze, and I'll build you a railroad to hell. Backed by $10 million from William Close and his British investors, it took 26 months 
and 450 tons of blasting powder for Michael Heaney and his determined workforce to turn the dream into reality. Today, scores of visitors from all over the world sail into Skagway to experience the excitement of the gold rush days and ride this historic railway. Much of Skagway's charm is preserved in its carefully restored buildings, many dating back to the last years of the 1800s. The combined efforts of the National Park Service and proud residents of Skagway strive to keep the history of the gold rush alive. The White Pass and Yukon route of today is the same company that first carried gold seekers over the pass. Coming from such colorful beginnings, the pride of this company is obvious. From the very front to the back of the train, WP and YR employees are dedicated in sharing this unique and genuine historic experience in comfort and safety. No matter where passengers board the train, a visit to the White Pass and Yukon Route Depot is part of the journey's experience. The building houses the ticket office and the train shop, where plenty of quality books, gifts, and apparel are for sale. Travelers routinely end up at the coffee bar, enjoying the colorful array of murals a chronicle of more than a century of White Pass and Yukon route history. Not unlike the stampeders of the past, today's riders board the WP and YR coaches with anxious anticipation, their minds bursting not with illusions of gold nuggets, but rather of thrilling vistas and stories of the railroad's fabled past. The proud fleet of passenger coaches is a combination of vintage and modern rail cars, all named after rivers and lakes in Alaska and northwestern Canada. The oldest car, Lake Emerald, number 244, was built in 1883 and is still in service today. The backbone of the White Pass fleet is its diesel-electric engines, built by General Electric and the American Locomotive Company, beginning in 1954 through the 1970s. White Pass has undertaken an ambitious program of modernizing these mechanical workhorses one engine at a time. This upgrade provides cleaner, more efficient engines to power WP and YR into the future. Just north of town are the railroad shops, where the coaches and fleet of engines are maintained. Here works a skilled and unique crew, with railroading running deep in their blood. So deep, there are even a few fourth generation White Pass employees in their ranks. WP and YR operate two of its original steam engines, one of which is over a hundred years old. They were built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and are routinely used for special excursion trips.
being pulled over the white pass to the rhythm of powerful steam pistons is a thrill of a lifetime for serious rail fans. At milepost 2.5, passengers are offered a glimpse of the Gold Rush Cemetery. Riders wishing to explore the profound mysteries of this rough and tumble graveyard are bestowed a glimpse of what it was like on the streets of Skagway back in 1897 and 98. By December of 1897, Skagway had swelled to a city of 10,000 inhabitants with an additional thousand stampeders passing through every week. The rush brought a booming economy to Skagway, but little law and even less order. Career criminal Jefferson Randolph Soapy Smith organized a gang of con men and proclaimed himself the uncrowned king of Skagway. His reign of terror ended on July 8, 1898 when he was killed in a late night shootout with the town surveyor, Frank Reed. Soapy died instantly from a shot through the heart, while the mortally wounded Reed endured eight days of agonizing pain before he went off to meet his maker. Soapy's remains lay in a modest grave, while Frank Reed is remembered as the man who gave his life for the honor of Skagway. Picking up speed, the train runs along the Skagway River, venturing deeper into the Tongass National Forest. The striking features of this lush coastal woodland flash a continuous selection of postcard scenes. Denver Station is a popular whistle stop for groups hiking to the face of Denver Glacier. The Red Caboose, donated by White Pass to the National Forest Service, shelters adventurers who decide to overnight in the valley. The stout bridge construction spanning the east fork of the Skagway River instills excitement and increased anticipation of engineering marvels yet to come. Up front, some additional power is applied to pull the train out of the valley floor. The sensation of the slow ascent surges through the train. Once in Skagway, the mayhem of the stampede left scores of stampeders without the $500 necessary to put together a grub stake, the year's supply of food and equipment required by law to enter Canada and continue on to the gold fields. To pay for this ton of goods, many went to work for the railway. They were men from all walks of life, a diverse lot, many of whom were professionals, all sharing the common dream of getting to the Klondike and striking it rich. In the words of Samuel Graves, first president of the White Pass and Yukon route, the railway was probably built by the most highly educated workforce ever assembled. Altogether, over 35,000 individuals engineered and constructed a railroad into the untamed north. Heaney's crew confronted their first serious obstacle at mile 6.9, a 120-foot high, solid wall of granite. Over 250 tons of black powder, enough to fill 44 passenger coaches, was detonated to dislodge enough rock to lay the rail bed. At $600 a ton, the black powder for Rocky Point alone cost the railroad $150,000.
back in 1898. Flying blast rock caused so many injuries, a doctor was required at an on-site hospital. As a number of laborers had been doctors themselves before their Klondike adventure, they were often pulled off the work line to assist the chief medical officer during an operation. When the procedure was finished, the assistant was sent back to work. Past Rocky Point, the experience becomes increasingly dramatic. Without exaggeration, the train travels along a narrow but solid ledge, blasted out of the rock. On one side, the rock face flies by seemingly inches from the coach. On the other, a splendid view of the Skagway Valley and the void below. As soon as the railroad was built, it became a sensation. Visitors ventured north to experience the majesty of Alaska and this now famous railroad. In 1922, George Buchanan, a wealthy coal baron from Detroit, Michigan, began sponsoring trips to Alaska for young boys. At milepost 8.8, .8, grateful Buchanan kids surprised their benefactor by climbing across the canyon and painting their slogan on the rock face. Every few years, volunteers from Skagway venture up to repaint and preserve this unique piece of history. On August 3rd, 1898, tragedy struck. Blasting dislodged a 500-ton piece of granite, crushing workman Alex Juneau and Maurice Dunn along with their pack horses. The massive, unmovable boulder became their tomb. A simple black cross was erected to mark the site. Michael J. Heaney remarked, No railroad worker could ask for a more fitting monument than that. Seen from mile 11.5, Bridal Veil Falls decorates the distant mountainside. Born of a glacier, it cascades 5,000 feet over exposed rock before joining the Skagway River below. Turning east along the upper Skagway River, the openings in the forest provide a clear view of the rail line on Tunnel Mountain. The excitement level is cranked up a notch when passengers realize their train will soon be traversing the steep mountainside. Glacier Station was home to a maintenance crew responsible for this section of the rail bed and a stop for steam engines to take on water. Today, hikers disembark and experience the splendor of this pristine valley on their trek to Lawton Glacier.
Leaving the Skagway River and Glacier Station behind, the train starts up the steepest section of the rail line. Referred to as the High Line, the 3.9% grade gains 206 feet in elevation for every mile of trek. Some extra power is needed to scale the steepest grade a loaded train can climb. The engineers designing the railroad chose a narrow gauge rail. Standard gauge measures four feet eight and one half inches from rail to rail, compared to the narrow gauge width of three feet. Not only was the narrow profile less expensive to build, the sharper turning radius was necessary in this mountainous terrain. Blasting the grade and laying the rail along slippery rock took place in the dead of winter. Severe weather often limited the men to one-hour shifts as they dangled from ropes on the icy wall of granite. Men worked in teams to blast the cliff face away from the mountain. One man held a drill steel between his legs, turning it a quarter turn with each blow from his partner's sledgehammers. When several holes were drilled, they were filled with black powder, and another portion of the rock was blown loose and hauled away. The reward? Daily wages of three dollars, or 30 cents an hour. Once around Slippery Rock, the men faced another challenge, bridging the 900-foot chasm of Glacier Gorge. Massive timbers were muscled into place, forming a wooden trestle, while men, working just yards away, drilled and blasted a 250-foot tunnel through the mountain. Like riders of the past, the thrill of crossing Glacier Gorge and disappearing into the tunnel is one of the highlights of the trip. There's no denying the view from the High Line is panoramic. Passengers looking back along their route might even see another train following them on their journey into the mountains. Inspiration Point aptly describes the vista from milepost 17. The port of Skagway from this perspective is testimony to both the rugged beauty of the landscape and the grueling efforts of the railroaders who forged this passageway out of the rock and made possible this thrilling present day experience. A resident mountain goat herd is often seen on the secluded alpine slopes above the White Pass Trail. A curious stare is the only reaction these sure-footed beasts share with the familiar chain of onlookers. The wind whistling through Dead Horse Gulch whispers of unfortunate animals sacrificed in the rush to the Klondike by insensitive gold-crazed stampeders. Horses gleaned from the glue factories in Seattle, were purchased at the Skagway dock for exorbitant prices. With little or no experience, and even less patience, the stampeders were merciless in their treatment of the animals. Over 3,000 pack animals lost their lives on what became known as the Dead Horse Trail. The young author, Jack London, wrote of the horrors that occurred. The horses died like mosquitoes in the first frost. And from Skagway to Bennett, they lay rotting in heaps. Men shot them, worked them to death, and when they were gone, went back to the beach and bought more. Their hearts turned to stone, those that did not break, and they became beasts, the men on the dead horse trail.
In 1901, the 1,200-foot-wide gorge at mile 18.6 was spanned by the famed steel cantilever bridge. At the time, the 215-foot-high structure was the tallest railroad bridge of its kind in the world. It was one of the many reasons the White Pass Railroad was designated an International Historic Civil Engineering Landmark, a title shared with the likes of the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, and the Panama Canal. Retired in 1969, the bridge remains a symbol of the White Pass and Yukon route and the centerpiece of the company logo. <laughs>